So, in the world of physics, we tend to study our physical surroundings. We have learned or we have spoken about measuring things, assigning to them their appropriate units. But, as you probably know by now, obviously, things in our real world ha will, for example, move. Look at that random villager at the back. And that chicken that is moving back and forth, left and right, in my background. Alright? So, in this video, we are going to talk about how on earth do we assign directions to things that are moving which will be vector and the difference between vector and physical qu physical quantities. So let's go. So as mentioned just now, physical quantities can be classified into scalar quantities and vector quantities. Now before we dive in, I'm going to define for you what these terms mean. Whenever you see a word scalar, it means that we only the only thing that matters or the only thing that is meaningful is the magnitude. So for example, if I were to say measure the mass of the chicken inside the minecart, that would be a scalar quantity. Because you're not going to say that the mass of the chicken is 2 kg to the right. Because that, that makes no sense, right? So scalar quantities are physical quantities, but with magnitude only. Okay, so I'll write that down for you. Okay, physical quantities with magnitude only. So let's think of a few examples. So for examples, uh, we are talking about mass, temperature, right? Uh, energy is a scalar, okay? Like for example, kinetic energy or potential energy, okay? And also, uh, something else that are scalar that is a little bit hard to phantom is length or distance. Okay, so more about this in your next chapter, all right? But this is scalar quantity. For scalar, we only think about magnitude. But what about vector? Okay, so remember the chicken, our friend the chicken? Let's go back and look at it. So if we're going to look at our friend here, you will notice that uh, it's sometimes going to the left and sometimes going to the right. But whether it's going left or right really depends on where I stand, right? Does that make sense? So whenever you have a vector quantity, say hello to Mr. Potato, my friend in this world. So whenever there's a vector quantity, where you start as a reference point is important and which direction you choose is important because left and right really depends on whether I'm standing on the side of Mr. Potato or whether I went over and stand on the side, on the opposite side. Okay, so reference point is very important, but generally, right, uh, to make your life less complicated, what we would do in physics is we will set the reference point for you and we will have a suggested sign convention. Okay, so let me set maybe this golden block here. I'm going to treat this block as your origin or your zero, zero. Okay, so let me build it up and we'll stand, go back and look at it. Okay, so if this golden block is zero, zero, hello little chicken. <laughs> Sometimes when the chicken is going to the left like this, we may want to give it one sign. When the chicken in the cart is going to the right, you may want to give it another sign. So the most convenient sign to use is positive and negative. And to differentiate this, we have to call the velocity or the way the chicken is moving as a vector. Because it not only matters how fast the chicken is moving, it also matters in which direction it's moving. So a vector quantity is like the velocity of this chicken in a mine cart. It has both magnitude, how fast it's moving, and direction, whether it's moving to the left or to the right, from my perspective, using this golden block as a reference point. So I always make sure I stand and stare at the golden block. All right, so let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, so vector quantity is physical quantities with both magnitude and direction. We need both. Okay, so both magnitude and direction. So example that I've shown you just now would be the speed of the chicken, sorry, the velocity of the chicken. Of course, we could talk about force because you could be pulling things left and right. Uh, we could talk about things like momentum. So all these are coming ahead in your syllabus or torque. Okay, so all of these are vectors. But how do we represent a vector? You notice that uh, sometimes the object is moving to the left, sometimes it's moving to the right. So 
To represent a vector, the easiest or most instinctive way would be maybe let me draw the mine, let me draw a box to represent the minecart. Sometimes the minecart is moving here. Eh? Sometimes the minecart is moving here. So we represent vectors in drawing by using an arrow. But it's not just any arrow, okay? The direction of the arrow shows you the direction of the vector. Okay, so if let's say my arrow is pointing to the right, this is the direction of the vector. So this means the chicken or the object has a velocity or is moving motion towards the right. And normally we would treat right as positive, but this one is up to you. Lah, okay, we'll talk about that in the next chapter. Okay, so this one is also velocity. So direction of arrow shows you the direction of the vector. And because you have both magnitude and direction, then the length of this arrow, or this length here, this L, L, the length of the arrow, shows you the magnitude, which is just a, a, atas, way, a atas way to say size of the vector. So if, let's say, you have another chicken with more powered rails moving faster, then you would draw a longer vector, all right? So what are the important skills you need to know in physics, especially for A-levels? Number one, you should be able to tell whether a physical quantity, when given to you, is vector or scalar, okay? So the important point to remember is when it's scalar, the magnitude matters, the direction. If you put a direction, like, for example, 36 degrees Celsius in the upward direction, very weird, okay? And for scalar, the direction makes sense. Like for example, moving to the left and right, moving up and down, etc., etc. Okay, when representing a vector, oftentimes we use a drawing, okay, and we label a vector. So in physics, we, are, we don't write equations for vectors, so there's no I and J or unit vectors that will be covered in mathematics if you do maths. But uh, in physics, we really need to know how to handle vectors because oftentimes our system, more than one thing is happening at the same time. For example, you notice in the video just now, there's this tiny little chicken that keeps walking across the screen. Maybe I want to find the distance between the tiny chicken and the minecart. So there are normally more than one object needing us to do this uh, technique called addition of vectors. So addition means combining vectors together. Okay, so there are two cases. The first case that I'll talk to you about is very straightforward. And then for the second case, we will have many methods. But before we add vectors, we have to ask ourselves the very important question. Come closer. We have to ask, are we going parallel in the same direction or in the opposite direction? So basically, is your vector parallel? Ah? Because, you know, before you set a business deal, you must make sure you and your business partner are parallel. So if it's parallel, then it's very straightforward. You can just plus or minus the magnitude, depending on whether they are in the same or opposite direction. So, for example, if you, you just say you're either my friend or my enemy because we are parallel. So, you either move like this together or move in the opposite direction, parallel. All right. So, let's look at an, an, an example of this vector drawing. So, what you see behind me is a demonstration of a vector drawing. And you will see, right, inside this picture up here behind me that there are two arrows. So, there are two vectors, oh? vector A and vector B. You can tell here that vector B is 5 units, maybe 5 newton or 5 meter per second. And vector A is also 5 units. So let's mix things up a bit. I'm just going to make B a bit longer. Okay. So if let's say A and B are pointing towards the same direction to the right, notice that this there's a zero here. So this zero is like my reference point, uh, my golden block, so to speak. Okay. But because you're looking at the paper, it doesn't... You can't look from behind the paper, right? So this is fine. So I'm going to add these two together and you will see that it's just nice 20. Of course, I can click the sum and then you can tell this is the resultant vector. So when I take vector A plus vector B, I just add their magnitudes 5 plus the other arrow, which is the longer one from here to here, which is 15. So you go 5, then you go 15. It's the same as going 20. Teacher, it's not I know already. Of course, lah. What happens if I change the direction of the vector? Let's see. Okay, now I have A and B. They are pointing in the opposite direction. Maybe 
There's a force pulling a box to the right by five units. There's a box pulling, pulling to the left by nine units of forces. Okay, so nine Newton and five Newton. But what is the sum? You will subtract them, right? So the difference between five and nine is four. So if I click on sum, I will get four, but four in the left direction. So maybe we want to give this a negative four compared to just now, positive 20. So I think parallel is very straightforward. You just add, add only. And this is a one-dimension vector. But you know what, guys? Life, where got 1D1, is two-dimension. So when the vectors are two-dimension, you now have to think a little bit differently. Vectors in 2D. So let's say I want to get to Mr. Potato here in the minecart. But I want to go and grab some baked potato here beside the diamond block and pass it to him to the minecart. So what I'll do is I'll walk along the diagonal. Okay. I'll grab some potatoes in my inventory. Alright. Then I'll walk towards him and throw him some potatoes. Nah. Here, yeah, Mr. Potato. So walking down this diagonal and towards here is the equivalent of me walking in a straight line just now. So this is what happens when vectors are in two dimensions because first I'm walking at the diagonal and then I walk towards. It's equivalent as walking from that purple block where I was standing from, that torch, all the way to my friend here. Hi, here's a potato. Alright, so let's go back and draw that vector drawing. Okay, we're back here. And we're going to talk about what happens when they are not parallel. So non-parallel vectors, there are a few strategies. But just now I showed you a drawing. So the drawing that I showed you just now was, uh, there was a purple block here where I was standing from. Here is where I started. Okay. Then I walked diagonally to the diamond block, that blue color looking block. Okay, and eventually what I did was I picked up the potato and walked towards the Mr. Potato. So maybe I'll call this um, vector A. Okay, so normally for physics, we just label the vectors with capital letters. Lah, but they are supposed to be bold. In maths, please draw your vector A with an arrow on top. Okay, so in so normally we'll denote it with the vector, with the arrow on top like that to remind us this is vector. Okay, so I walked down the diagonal of the track. I picked up the potato. I went to the farmer here, the Mr. Potato. Is it a farmer? It's a Fletcher, I think. This one is B. So it is the same as, let's say, if I already have potatoes in my inventory, if I were to walk directly and pass it to him here. So this is the vector A plus the vector b okay so once again here plus here is equal to here all right so no matter how you draw just make sure the pathway aligns so that is how we can add the vectors so before we go uh, we have to think about how to draw this especially if you have two vectors like this that are not parallel okay so for example in this uh, past year question from winter 12 paper one two you are given two vectors P and Q, but they are drawn to scale, okay? So which diagram can possibly represent P plus Q? So we're going to have to put these two together, like this black one, one after the other, okay? So because I'm using one node, right? Or basically a digital writing format, I can do this, but you may not be able to. So, but I can do this just to show you what is going on. So I have a vector pointing roughly in this direction. Okay, this is P, and then I have a second vector that's pointing downward in this direction. This is Q. So you can use this as a tool to help you. But if I were to place Q uh, and move it to P, like this. So if this is P followed closely by Q, and then the resultant would be where you start, which is here. This part here is where you start to where you end, which is here. Okay, so I'm going to join these two starting and ending points together. And you will notice that this one is P plus Q. 
So what you need to do is you need to take a ruler, okay? You've got ruler, right? Let's say you have a physical paper, say you're sitting for your A-levels. Take a ruler, okay? Any good old ruler, the half-transparent one, this type will do, okay? Let's see, get my ruler, okay? Get a ruler. Transfer the line, make sure it's parallel law. So P plus Q is this one. Roughly, roughly, lah. Okay, so objective is very nice. You can roughly, roughly, and then you look at all these answer. This two, this two, this one is wrong. Hello, wrong channel. D is pointing like that. I mean, sorry, my camera is like D is pointing like that. Where God? Hello, excuse. So P plus Q is pointing slightly down and to the right. So this pointing up one is bye bye. This is pointing up. A and B is pointing down, but B is way too down. So no. So the answer is A. Alright. So uh, when it comes to drawing, it's as simple as moving them together. P plus Q will be equal to this one. Of course, you may be able to draw by transferring the arrow. Of course, you may be thinking, Miss, I take Q and put to P. Can I take P and put to Q? I can. If you take P and you move it to Q here, do you notice that you end up with the same triangle? Hmm? So it doesn't matter which one you draw first, they are the same thing. So move whichever that makes sense to you. Lah. Okay, that's right. That's it for a basic, simple 2D drawing. This is method one. Okay, so I'm going to expound a little bit more on method one later. But let's say, for example, you are like, teacher, I see what you did there. This is objective. Oh. But let's say this come out in paper two uh, structure. Or oh, maybe they give me numbers. Oh. Maybe they give me something like P is uh, 10 and Q is 17. So what is P plus Q? Is it 10 plus 17? So right now, I'm just going to write here. This is, as it is 10 Newton and I don't know, maybe this is 17. I'm just guessing. Okay. So P plus Q cannot be 27 because that, again, makes no sense, right? Because if they are 27, they are parallel. So this is going to be less than 27, okay? Because it depends on what angle there is there in between this. So we need a method to tackle this, okay? So right now, whenever you have this situation, when you are asked to calculate instead of drawing, there are three ways. The first way that I'm going to go into is scale drawing. Okay, the second way that we can go into is by resolving vectors. Okay, so there's method one, there's method two. Okay, and there is a third method, method three, that is not very popular amongst the physics teachers because we don't really like this, but it's there, so I'm just going to tell you we are going to do solutions of triangle. So those of you who do add maths, you will know what I'm talking about. Or if you don't like this trying this method, just know that it exists and you don't have to use it. But it's important for you to know the first method, which is scale drawing, and the second method, which is resolving the vectors. So I'm going to move a little bit different to my notes. I'm going to jump straight to scale drawing. Okay, so the first method we're going to look at is scale drawing. Not just drawing the direction of the vector, but actually knowing how long or what's the actual magnitude of P plus Q. It's not going to be 27, okay? All right, I'll see you at the example.